Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project, constructing an extensible unit test class hierarchy for the web service controller components. Let's get started. I've opened the project in Spring Tool Suite. In the last video series, we created the abstract test class. The abstract test class is the parent class for all unit test classes. It supplies the configuration that Spring needs to start the unit test runner and configure the Spring Boot application for test execution. We're going to create a specialization of abstract test called abstract controller test, which performs additional initialization to support testing controller components. In the source test Java directory, Find the package named org example ws. In that package, create a new abstract class named abstract controller test, which extends abstract test. Annotate the class with web app configuration to tell Spring to create a web application context instead of a standard application context. Use the auto-wired annotation to inject the web application context into this class. Next, create a protected class scoped variable of type mock MVC. Mock MVC is a class from the Spring mock packages which simulates HTTP interactions. Create a method named setup and initialize the mock MVC attribute with our web application context, making the mock MVC object aware of all of our application components. Our web service endpoints receive and produce JSON. Let's create two utility methods that use the Jackson object mapper to transform data between Java objects and JSON. Now that we've created the base class for RESTful Web Service Controller testing, let's create some unit tests for the greeting controller. Create a new package in the source test Java directory named org.example.ws.web.api. 
Within that package, create a new class named Greeting Controller Test, which extends the Abstract Controller Test. Annotate the class with Transactional so that any destructive database operations are rolled back after each test method. Use the AutoWired annotation to inject an instance of the greeting service into the test class. We will see how this is used in just a moment. Create a public method named Setup. Annotate this method with before to instruct JUnit to execute this method prior to every test method. Within the setup method, call the setup method on the abstract controller test parent class to initialize the mock MVC attribute. Then use the greeting services evict cache method to ensure that the cache of greetings is emptied before each unit test. Now, Let's create a test method to fetch all greetings. Every controller test will use logic like this to simulate a HTTP transaction. First define the web service URI template. Then use the mock MVC request builders utility to create a mock HTTP request using the URI and HTTP request headers. Use the mock MVC attribute from abstract controller test. The perform method sends the mock request to Spring where it's mapped to the greeting controller's get greetings method. The mock MVC and return method returns an MVC result object containing the HTTP status and response body returned by the greeting controller invocation. We will use these values to assert the test results are as we expected. Let's run the application unit tests. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project based directory. Type MVN clean package and press enter. As a part of the package goal, Maven executes unit tests. Maven logs the summary results of the unit tests to the console. Nine tests were executed with zero failures, errors, and skips. Remember that eight of those tests were from the greeting service test class. You can also run unit tests in Spring Tool Suite. Right-click the unit test class and select Run As JUnit Test. In the JUnit view, the results of the unit test are displayed. Now that we've created the basic framework for testing RESTful web service controllers, I'm going to add unit tests for the other endpoints in the greeting controller class. I'll paste the unit tests and review them one at a time. The test get greeting method executes the get greeting endpoint. Notice the URI template contains a path variable. 
The value for that path variable is supplied to the mock MVC request builder's utility as it creates the HTTP request. The test get greeting not found method also tests the get greeting endpoint, but it uses an ID value which we know does not exist. Notice that we assert the response code is 404. The test create greeting method tests the create greeting endpoint. In this method, we create a greeting entity and use the map to JSON method from the abstract controller test to serialize it to JSON. The mock MVC request builder's post method is invoked to create an HTTP post request, and the content method is used to place the JSON in the request body. Finally, we deserialize the response body contents into a greeting object using our map from JSON method so that we can assert so that we can perform assertions on the response. The test update greeting method tests the update greeting endpoint. It's very similar to test create greeting. Notice we use the put method on the mock MVC request builders to generate an HTTP put request to the controller. The test delete greeting method tests the delete greeting endpoint. As you probably expect, the mock MVC request builders has a delete method to create an HTTP delete request. Let's run the application unit tests one more time. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project based directory. Type MVN clean package and press enter. Maven logs the summary results of the unit test to the console. This time all of our controller unit tests are executed. You can also run the unit tests in the Spring Tool Suite. Right click the unit test class and select Run as JUnit Test. In the JUnit view, the results of the unit test are displayed. Using the Spring mock packages, you can create a framework to support and simplify the creation of unit tests for RESTful web service controllers. These unit tests validate the controller request mappings, the logic within the web service, and the response values. In any application, it is important to have a strategy for unit tests to ensure maximum code coverage but avoid overlapping tests. It's often forgotten that unit tests are a part of the code base that require maintenance as well. The tests we created in this video not only invoke the controller, but also the business services and data repositories. Those components are already, already tested in their own unit test classes. In the next video in this series, I will demonstrate how to use Makito to, to create test stubs of the business services and inject them into the controllers for unit testing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com.